So let's become the greatest versions of ourselves. And one last time, welcome to the third annual Racist Anonymous Summit. And I want us all to give a warm welcome to our final speaker of the evening. It's Brian Denotti. <laughs> That was a cool intro. <laughs> yeah, I want to thank the host for putting that little uh, secret chat in the bottom here. But anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. And before I get started, I just want to say it is an honor to be a part of the summit this year. So before my one-on-one -on -one session with each of you tomorrow, I wanted to give a talk that I believe will be worthwhile. And no, I'm going to ask some rhetorical questions throughout. And I recommend you jot them down, self-reflect on your answers to them before we speak individually. And know that I come here as a humble servant to you all. Genuinely, I want to understand your thinking through this three-day summit. I want all of us to become better, more open-minded people. I do not judge you. I do not. And I know you all have your own reasons for being racist too. I am not here to generalize you. And I am not insinuating that everything I will discuss apply specifically to you, but I want to encourage you to stay open-minded to see if it does. I believe something will resonate. So first, I just want to share something that I hold dear in my quest to become my most authentic, greatest, most open-minded self. And that thing is this, thinking. Thinking. You have to start there and continuously reflect. Like, who are you? What do you want to be? What is the meaning of your life? How do you show love to yourself, to other people? Do you even want to show love to the world? And if not, then what are the overarching goals of your life? You got to start there. You have to know what your foundation is. And as much effort, men and women, as I will put into understanding you all in my time here at the summit, that should pale in comparison to the effort you put into understanding yourself day in and day out, your whole self. So keep tabs on where you were at. What are your current biases? Who is biased towards you? And what's an example of that? And let's dig deeper there a bit. So close your eyes, close your eyes, and imagine you are being discriminated against. Someone generalizes you based off your race. What could the generalization be? That person judges you without even knowing you, without even knowing you. And how does that make you feel? Right, they had their reasons. Everyone has reasons. A murderer has reasons. A child molester has reasons. A liar has reasons. But you have to understand this. Reasons and excuses are two different things. They're two different things. Reasons are not excuses, period. And by the way, let's, let's go back to you now. What are your reasons for viewing a race as inferior or handicapped in a given situation? Where do your prejudices come from? Who influenced you growing up and perhaps still is? Everyone is influenced by forces and shaped a certain way. You got to recognize though that influence and control are two different things. The influencer at times tricks you into believing they are your controller. But you are the controller over your mind no matter what. Think about it. Why is your influencers, whether it's your parents, mainstream media, someone else's perspective so valid enough? so moral enough that it takes precedent over your perspective? Why are you letting imperfect beings dictate what's in here? Straight up too. I think 90% of y'all, you're not even raised to the court. You've just been brainwashed and influenced enough that you've given up trying to get those racist thorns out of your brain. You think you've actually given up your control, but guess what? It never goes away. It's just lying in wait for you to tap into it again. So that's what you have to understand. And now right now, back to the rhetorical questions. So what is race? Who told you it was important? Seriously, like did anyone tell you to notice people who wear glasses versus those who don't? To notice people who have blue eyes versus those with brown? You don't separate those groups, why? Because nobody influenced you to separate those groups. Nobody talks about that, so you don't recognize that. And guess what, when the chatter out there is louder than in here, you hear that more and you give in to the influence. And look, no shame. Once again, I come in peace. I come in peace, perhaps with tough love. I'm imperfect too. I learn too. But guess what? To be the best person you can be, you have to adopt a growth mindset. So when you see specifics of your thinking that aren't actually yours or when your thinking is faulty, 
You gotta view that as a positive thing because then you can improve your thinking. So it's okay to be wrong if you recognize it because then you can change it. And then you can get closer to your actual truth, not the truth someone convinced you to have. So you gotta let go of your ego pretty much. And this is so important because guess what? The ego needs to die continuously anyway in order for the best version of yourself to be indefinitely manifested. So let's circle back now. Who influenced you to think race was important? Race, just like anything on the outside, someone's height, eye color, has no connection to what someone does, right? They can be a four foot 10 serial killer or a four foot 10 saint. If someone has blue eyes, they can be mean spirited or they can be kind. A white person can go rob a store or be a hero. That black person you just met yesterday could be a liar or can be your soulmate. You don't know based off appearance. A person's decision making, which is based off a multitude of factors, leads to them doing what they do that has nothing at all to do with skin color. That's not my experience. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So, so let's go with that. Say in your life experience, the percentage of people of a certain race you encounter are more XYZ negative than, okay. So let's say you make an assumption of 25 people of that race based off that. And let's say you meet each of those people and you're right in your assumption 14 times, or, or hey, let's go on the extreme, man, and say you get lucky 24 times you're right. But what about that one person? You judge, let's say him, without knowing him. You paint a picture of him that was not him and that's on you. That's an error in your judgment, period. So once you calculate you bring your negative perspectives onto that person that did not have a negative light onto him to begin with, the negative energies in the universe is greater all because of you. And that's just one person. So some of you say you believe in God, right? And you may. So think about this. Why would you intentionally bring more negativity into circulation in, the, in this, in this, in the air, in the world? Right? Tell God why when you meet him. He doesn't separate people by their outer layers in heaven anyway. And he surely doesn't expect you to do that on earth. The alternative of this scenario is not to assume anything negative or positive about somebody solely based off their skin color. In that case, there is no error in your judgment because there are no judgments made. And notice, I didn't say assume something positive. Why not? Because when you do that, assume something positive about someone based off their skin color, that is biased against the races excluded. So I said assume no nothing at all. You gotta stay open-minded and you won't be injecting the universe with distorted information. You gotta let your brain process people as they move into your life. So that's really important. That's really important. And then you gotta make judgment from there on someone's character, intentions, or personality. That's easier too. It's just letting the space be. It's staying present pretty much. And what you'll realize too over time is that often the negative energies you may have seemingly received from another race will disappear little by little. And you'll realize the energies you projected onto them actually were a part of the boomerang back at you. Stop assuming and the assumption will perish. Keep that in mind. And similarly to that, when you stop seeing color, color stops seeing you. So we really need to get to a point, I believe, where we do not see color. Okay, oh, I hear the groans, I hear the groans. Look, and I, I understand. Like there's some twisted people out there that think those who quote unquote don't see color are the ignorant ones. But flip that on its head. Who cares what they think about what you think? See, this is what you have to let go of. People's interpretations of your intentions do not matter. You gotta respect their viewpoints and perspectives, but not about the meaning behind what you say. You dictate that. And to get real, that's a part of the problem that you have. You are not thinking for yourself. You're letting your past experiences or other perspectives dictate your mindset. You're always concerned about how they are judging you, what they are doing, what they are thinking. They are not you. So you need to take a stance and take ownership over your thoughts. And guess what? Seeing 
Skin color is how you got into the mental mess you're currently going through, so you gotta let it go. You have to let it go. So when you see a group of people rob a store, let's say, or do something like just be pompous jerks, <laughs> you gotta stop seeing race. And when you interview an applicant for a job who maybe can't articulate herself very well, stop seeing race. So in those instances, you need to articulate better inside of your brain, inside of your brain. So instead of asserting from scenarios like that, X, Y, Z race people are always robbing a store or are always pompous jerks or aren't very bright and then judging the next person of that race from there, you got to frame it in a more accurate way. You got to be more specific. So it really is not that you don't like people of XYZ race deep down perhaps, it's just that you don't like people who shoplift a store, right? So in your head, you gotta frame it like this, say, the decision making of someone who would rob a store is misguided. I don't like the specific type of person who is a pompous jerk, regardless of race, obviously. And guess what? That cuts to the core of what you actually don't like anyway, the actions and being part, not the race part. So you have to speak clear in here and get race out of your mind when evaluating and meeting people because it means nothing without any other context, right? You can't tell someone's wealth, inherited wealth, character, struggle, political party, health problems, intelligence, where they live, from their skin color. So stop acting like you can. And look, reverse it too, reverse it. Someone can't tell any of those things about you from your skin color either, and they never will. So take pride in that. Look up from that. And look, there's high diversity within every race out there, and you need to understand that. And that's because diversity is a hallmark of the human species, including yourself. So don't botch yourself in mentally. You got to know and own your inner dialogue. Every thought you had, detach it, metaphorically put it on the table, evaluate it and ask yourself, where did it come from? Is it really mine? Do I want it to be mine? I would say so many of you have been so heavily influenced over the course of your life to think in a tribal, a group way that you don't even know who you are. So let's end where we first started. Who are you? What is your individual identity? You got to start there at the core because that's the root of the racism manifested outwardly. That's the root. Like you are not someone else. That person who did something to you or was racist to you in the past. So stop being a reflection of that person who, guess what? Oddly enough, is a reflection of someone else too. It's a cycle and someone's got to step up and break free. Someone's got to think for themselves, have moral character. Don't be the misguided spirit Break from someone else's heart. Why would you want to be them? Do you want to be them? Who do you want to be? You can reborn on command anytime that you want. You got to let go of what is not yours. You have to live with yourself between the ears. So make sure it's actually yourself. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to talk to all of you the next couple of days. And we're going to leave this summit. Open-minded people. Overcome racism. Share the messages, share the videos.